good afternoon. Thank you, Eric and Liberato, for uh, organizing this interesting event. And in the next minutes, I will present the uh, new reinforcement concepts we have been working at ETH Zurich in the last uh, four years. In the presentation, so it's not only about uh, extrusion based 3D printing, but uh, we'll cover also several digital fabrication technologies with concrete, which I think are also interesting for uh, reinforcement. Okay, so this is the uh, <clears throat> outline of my presentation. And first, similarly to uh, what Jax have, has done, is I would like to emphasize the necessity to find suitable reinforcement strategies for digital fabrication. I think there have been many applications in the last years of unreinforced 3D concrete printing, but they were concrete elements, but they could have been done uh, using an inexpensive uh, masonry walls. So I think if we really want to do building structures, we need uh, reinforcement to provide uh, not only strength, but also a good serviceability behavior and also sufficiently ductile behavior. And now I will introduce several reinforcement concepts from most conventional to most innovative. And first of all, uh, conventional reinforcement bars, it's, uh, I think they will still play a major role in the future of uh, digital fabrication. Uh, but of course, we should think uh, not only in new ways of uh, producing concrete, but also new ways to produce and assemble reinforcement. Here you have uh, in the slide an uh, example of the in situ fabricator uh, developed at TTH Zurich that is able to produce uh, double corp uh, welded uh, reinforcement. And uh, having these possibilities, we can uh, think in new construction processes like the mass mold that maybe several of you know, in which this fine reinforcement mass is the final reinforcement, but is also acting as a stay in place permeable formwork. And then we use a special concrete mix that is uh, reaching good compaction, but is not flowing out of the mass. For example, this technology it has a great potential for producing uh, efficiently double curb structures. Here I have a video to show you uh, how this uh, how mesh mold was used to in a real building project. And here you can see that the robot is introducing a continuous uh, vertical reinforcement of six millimeters and welds uh, small segments in the horizontal direction. So <clears throat> you see that with this process, uh, we can do the double curve, uh, double side mesh, and then uh, this can be filled without the necessity of conventional reinforcement. So this is one example of uh, using conventional reinforcement but we, we have uh, applied uh, this uh, steel reinforcing bars also for uh, smart dynamic casting and this uh, technology is so so it's uh, uh, we have a small slipping formwork and by using a bit steady control set on demand concrete, we can place uh, fluid uh, concrete on top of the formwork, which uh, by the end of the lifts the formwork uh, in a hardening state. This means that we can shape the element either by rotating the rigid formwork or in other cases by applying the formations to a flexible formwork. And of course, if we have very complex geometries, uh, reinforcement is not the right approach, but in for some cases, we can uh, pre-install uh, reinforcement and slip uh, our concrete element uh, around 
is going forward. So this is what uh, it was done uh, in an application. Here it was also a real construction project that where you can see well, this was the production of uh, facade concrete mullions, I think very thin, only eight millimeters. So this is why we have only one layer of uh, reinforcement. This is uh, installed in the before slipping. <clears throat> and here you see the sear reinforcement where was it uh, thins, and we analyze uh, other reinforcing possibilities for the sear reinforcement, but this was uh, the solution that uh, ensured like building building code compliance. And I would show you uh, the, the casting process. So we use this uh, fluid uh, concrete, so it can be cast from the side. So then it's compatible with having a vertical reinforcement. And then here you see the slipping uh, process. And quite good uh, surface finishing with, with this technology. Good. So, <clears throat> so in this slide, you can see uh, the uh, final results of uh, these technologies that I was showing in the previous videos. This is the uh, DFAP house, a building for academic guests at EMPA near to Zurich. And on the uh, Left side, you see this uh, facade uh, concrete mullions. Each one was uh, tailor made because they have different spacing and different uh, acting loads. And on the right, you see this uh, double core mesmer wall. I think this uh, concept of conventional reinforcement was used also to produce this uh, future tree uh, column. And in this case, it was done with the Excel technology. So the concept of Excel is using uh, also this uh, digitally uh, controlled set on demand process to minimize the farm work pressure. And in this way, it's possible to use a minimum farm work. And here you can see this, uh, in this case, the farm work was 3D printed with a ultra thin layer of uh, plastic that can be uh, reuse, recycle afterwards. Um, of course, we can have uh, very complex geometries with Excel, Excel technology, but in some cases like here, so it was possible to fit the reinforcement inside the prefabricated foam board and produce the column. And to finish with this uh, conventional reinforcement, I would like to point out that we should not only develop uh, new reinforcement concepts, but also to rethink the way we, uh, <coughs> uh, we do structural design. I think here I'm showing maybe one of the potentials that uh, we could uh, find when, when using these new possibilities uh, offered by digital fabrication. Here, uh, I saw why weak interfaces could be even beneficial and reduce the amount of minimum reinforcement. Because I think, uh, well, I think you know that uh, this, uh, in 3D printing, we have uh, a reduced tensile strength uh, at the interfaces between uh, two layers. And this is often seen as uh, something bad, but if we manage to have a continuous reinforcement across them, as you saw in the previous presentation, or other groups are trying, so then these weak interfaces from the mechanical point of view uh, could be even beneficial because uh, concrete will crack anyways, and uh, with the weak interfaces, we will have more cracks. And having more cracks means that we have lower crack spacing, lower crack weights. We have conducted, uh, you see on the right, a series of experiments where we have the same uh, tension core uh, when we build it with 3D printing uh, concrete. Uh, we have more uh, cracks and then the crack spacing and the crack widths were around 
30 to 40 to 40 percent uh, smaller so in the similar range of um, the reduction that we have in the weak interface so this means that if we have a uh, several uh, crack width to fulfill in our structure if we use 3d printing we could uh, achieve the same crack width with less than 40. so and that's for sure there will be more concept more concepts that we can introduce in structural design when we do this self case. Now, uh, other technology that for sure has a great potential in digital fabrication is fiber reinforced concrete because it offers the possibility to produce uh, easily in uh, very complex geometries. So we are implementing fibers in several of our technologies, but not just mixing the fibers in concrete, but following what we call interlayer fiber reinforcement, which is a possibility when we have an additive manufacturing concrete process. The concept is simple. So we, we have uh, our 3D printed layer and we place uh, the fibers in a second uh, additive manufacturing process on top of the concrete. And why we have uh, or we are developing this approach, this is to tackle some of the challenges of adding fibers in digital fabrication concrete mixes. And one is uh, the rheology, that I think it, this is a complex uh, process. But if we add fibers, then it's modified, so it's even more complex. And the other is that if we need to pump uh, concrete mix, we can use only. Uh, expensive short, short fibers. So we wanted to overcome these uh, aspects, but also uh, we place uh, the fibers in a control manner, manner. So in each point of the structure, we can uh, decide on the amount and orientation of the fibers. This brings possibilities to reduce the amount of fibers that we have to put in our structures, but also if we place fibers, so we can uh, do not place them in the cover of the elements. So uh, this, the fibers will not corrode uh, at the surface, which is uh, often an aesthetic uh, problem. We are still developing this concept, so uh, this is not running uh, uh, automated and uh, also, we have observed that if we place a lot of uh, fibers in a single input layer, then we might have uh, some delamination issues and quite a severe softening. But, uh, for, for example, in combination, so if have, we have in the perpendicular direction some post tensioning, then this might not be a problem. This is why uh, we have applied this concept as the shear reinforcement in a series of extrusion based 3D printed beams with a span of 1.6 uh, meters. And this is a proof of concept, so we have applied manually the fibers you see on the right with the help of magnetic uh, strips. And uh, we have compared also with uh, having a continuous cable also in the interlay. Then the uh, longitudinal reinforcement is post installed and we apply a fruit on it. So, in this slide, you can see the result, uh, the load uh, deflection behavior of uh, several beams, all were identically besides the shear reinforcement. And you see, of course, if we don't have reinforcement, so after uh, cracking, so we don't have. Uh, capacity left, but we can reach good post-cracking behavior if we have the fibers or the cables. And uh, also important is that this test, so shear cracks are crossing the, so the, the layers. So we have uh, vertical uh, printed layers and we observe like uh, normal shear cracks. So they are not influenced by the the printing uh, layers. 
and also with fibers we have several zinc tracks which is also uh, beneficial then uh, conclude my presentation so i would like to show the last approach that is the use of native textiles which is very promising to build and reinforce complex concrete structures and the, the need grid technology uh, consists of using uh, a textile, a wet knitted textile, which can easily enable uh, the integration of features or to do double curved surfaces without the need of stitching uh, multiple patches. And uh, the, the technology, so it's so we have we tension a textile, then we apply a thin layer of semen paste that guarantees the uh, form stability when we apply the final uh, concrete layer. So here, so it's very interesting, but uh, the challenge is how to integrate reinforcement. And for doing this, we are uh, following two approaches. The first is, okay, why not using this uh, textile as reinforcement? Of course, we have to use uh, high-strength uh, fiber uh, materials, and uh, to validate uh, this uh, approach, so we have been doing this in actual tension test, and here you can see a selection of uh, results. Uh, here on the left, this is also load of deflection, like load. Uh, <clears throat> Longitudinal deformations, and when we have uh, on the left a uh, directly knitted textile, so the behavior is quite bad. So we don't reach a good level of utilization of the fiber. But uh, in these knitted textiles, we can also introduce uh, straight inlays, and when we have this straight inlay, so we reach uh, good uh, behavior. Then on the bottom of the slide, so see the comparison of two tests with both with straight uh, glass fiber inlays. And on the left uh, with the semen paste coating, and the behavior is it's quite bad. And, uh, and we use a more standard foxy coating, so uh, we reach uh, a good behavior. Good. Um, but besides using the uh, or in combination of using uh, activating the this, uh, textile form uh, other possibility to uh, introduce reinforcement that we have in netgrid is that it's possible to produce channels and slips integrated in the textile so this can drive uh, linear reinforcement and this is uh, very promising we are yeah, uh, following this uh, or further developing this this concept. Also for installation, so we have to tension the textile and this linear reinforcement could be acting as bending active props. So with this, I conclude my presentation and this was all a collaboratory uh, research done uh, within the National Center, Center of Competence in Research Digital Publication. So thank you to all the people that made possible this research. And also thank you for your attention. So I will be happy to answer any questions so if, if you have. <clears throat> thank you, Jaime. Uh, so there's one question. Uh, did you check the influence of time gap between the layers when used in interlayer fiber reinforcement approach? So this this effect uh, we we have not uh, studied consistently with the fiber uh, with the yeah, interlayer fiber reinforcement because uh, yeah, up to now we do it in a quite like manual way. So we we have done these magnetic strips in order to place them uh, yeah, as quickly as possible. And uh, But of course, uh, if 
we could do the process uh, faster. Maybe uh, the, maybe the bond of uh, the layers, uh, and the bond of the fibers would be better. So I think this would be interesting. I think we, we will do this. Uh, we will continue this this research when we will be able to place these fibers uh, automatically. But this, okay. yeah, it's a very interesting uh, topic. Yes, uh, there's another question. Uh, what is the energy efficiency of new reinforcement with respect to conventional mesh? Of new reinforcement? Uh, so I, this I believe they're, they're referring to the um, your reinforcement method where you're um, Looks like you're welding the re reinforcement together. What is the difference in do you, do you know have you measured the difference in energy efficiency? Yeah, so of course this is so yeah we have done some tests and for this application I saw in the DFAP house so uh, it was uh, so it, even in some parts we have to add some uh, uh, continuous reinforcement also in this horizontal direction because I think this uh, welding uh, of small segments or these welded uh, elements are not very efficient. So I think that in the future, I'm pretty sure that maybe not on site, but in a prefabrication scenario, so it, it will be possible to have, uh, yeah, to do this kind of assemblies, uh, not welding, but having continuous reinforcement in, in several directions. But I think this will be the, really the, the potential. 